Hi everybody and welcome to my boiler den. This is where I strip some of these old boilers in my spare time. Excuse the mess, uh, but this is where I just come in my spare time. As and when I can find some time uh, to just strip some of these boilers. Some for parts, some for experience as you can see. And while stripping these boilers you end up with, or can end up with, a lot of spare parts as well. So today what we've got lined up is a Logic Combi 24. Yes, everybody's favourite boiler I'm sure. Okay, let's have a quick look inside of it. So everything's going to come out of this boiler and it's just going to be an empty shell once we finish with it. Oh no, that's the problem with the majority of these unfortunately. Can you see all of these marks, heat marks? and this is the cause of those marks do drop me a line just to show if you've come across this problem before uh, I've got an ideal sump just in there a brand new one because we do often chain these so I'll be stripping it all out Venturi is quite bad I don't think it was serviced on regular basis as well so I'll be stripping it all out and then show you as we go along okay so I've now removed uh, quite a few components out of this ideal logic combi 24 that was stripping down so I've removed the fan which we will take a closer look at all of this when I dismantle the venturi out of it the gas valve Part of fluid or air intake, as you can call it. PCB. So let's have a look what's left in the boiler. Not a lot. Not a lot left in the boiler now. I'll be removing this pump and the rest of stuff, uh, as well as the plate to plate heat exchanger. What I wanted to show you though is that sump for the boiler. Uh, which is this bottom plastic part that does require changing on these as it leaks uh, combustion products as you can see these marks on the side normally you have this cap covering it so this cap normally goes here but when you remove that this is what was causing all of these marks at the back of the PCB as well as you can see so let's have a closer look at it now that we've removed the covers and I'm not sure if you can spot, but there is that deformity and a minor crack on this here. However, when we do take it out, we'll be able to have a closer look at it. So I've removed the two screws from the side, removed the return and floor pipe. Uh, obviously, removed the expansion vessel that was here. That's just sitting at the back there. So now we should be able to just lift this thing out for further inspection okay obviously the burner is still connected I've removed all the cables and everything out of here now so we'll be able to have a better look at this what I'm gonna do is we need to remove the sun which with one hand can be fairly difficult at times No, nope, I need both hands, so just give me one tick. Okay, so now I have removed this sump from this heat exchanger. So we can have a closer look at it. That's what the heat exchanger looks like. It was a bit dirty. With this white sooty material. Let's have a quick look. You can see better now. So that's where it cracks. And then he allows the combustion products to leak within the boiler, marking the PCB. And obviously the appliance does become dangerous if it's in continuous use. So that's something that as engineers we need to pay extra attention to. So that's the problem. 
or one of the problems I should say with these. I'll also be removing this burner, inspecting it to see what's the condition on that. I'm going to be removing this venturi. Let me just try it whilst. No, just give me one second. Let me just slacken these screws. It's very difficult to work with one hand. Okay, so I've removed these two screws out of this now. So let's have a quick look. Look at the injector. As you can see, the state of it seems like this hasn't been cleaned for a few years. Part of the service obviously this needs to be cleaned externally and internally going back to the boiler there isn't much left in this now we'll come back to that shortly as soon as we've got the burner removed from it we'll have a quick look at the burner next okay so let's have a look at this burner now I've removed these two screws so obviously the boilers kind of turn this way normally when it's on the wall. So these are two front screws that we've removed already. And then the back screws, you don't need to remove completely. You can do if you want to, uh, but it's just a matter of slackening it slightly. And I'll show you why. As you can see, the burner has these two slots that it kind of just slides into too. So it just comes out. So now that we've got the burner removed, we can have a look at the seal so we can inspect the seal to see if that needs replacing and then the state of the burner itself as you can see some of these holes not a lot but quite a few are actually blocked but all of that needs to be hoovered as much as you can although there will be quite a lot that we will still not be able to remove or clean for the reason Purely because we cannot remove this ceramic disc that we've got on top of the burner uh, or if it can be removed and replaced I'll stand corrected but I'm not sure uh, as I've not seen this particular part uh, as a replacement part for this except if we have to buy the whole assembly to replace it now this is one so this is the same burner that I kind of for inspection reasons removed the ceramic plate off previously and as you can see, no matter how good you hoover it out, it still leaves quite a lot of this fluffy material stuck between the burner plate and the ceramic plate that's kind of glued on top of it like that. Now this ceramic plate obviously was this way around and I've only got a little piece of it now, but a couple of pieces I should say, but that's how it was. So from this side, as you can see, it looks pretty clean. Same as that. But if you have a look at it from the other side, you will find that quite a few holes are actually blocked, as you can see. So that's what causes the inefficiency in the boiler. Uh, boiler not kind of giving enough heat out, not warming your water enough, and also making silly humming noises as well at times. So this is inside the heat exchanger. Obviously we've got our flame rectification device. We've got the ignition probes or electrodes. But yeah, that's what a stripped down burner and heat exchanger looks like on this ideal logic. I'll obviously remove the pump and the heat exchanger out of here as well. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching the video. Take care, bye.